Hi and welcome back. This is topic 13 now of OCR A-level chemistry specification. This one's about equilibrium. Hopefully by now you've come across the term equilibrium and you know that reactions can go forwards and sometimes they go backwards. And so when you've got a reaction where the forward rate is exactly the same as the reverse rate, you have what's called dynamic equilibrium. Reactants are still changing into products, products are still changing into reactants, but they're doing it at the same rate, and so the concentration of each doesn't change. And that's called dynamic equilibrium, and you need to know that definition. And for that to happen, you need to be in what's called a closed system. That means there's no matter transfer from the inside to the outside of that system. You can't transfer matter with the surroundings. For instance, an open beaker would not be a closed system because it can transfer matter with the surroundings. Now often people get confused and they think that the concentrations of the reactants and the products have to be the same, and that's not true at all. The products could be the majority of everything inside the reaction mixture. You could have 99% products, or you could have 1% products and 99% reactants. The only thing that matters is that those concentrations don't change, and that's because the rate of going forward and the rate of going backwards are the same. Now that's not to say that you can't change the rates. We already know that we can change the rate of a reaction by increasing the temperature, pressure, concentration, surface area, and adding a catalyst. And so those things still affect the rates. And you can change the position of an equilibrium by changing some of those factors which affect the rate of reaction. So at this point, it's probably useful to put a reaction on the board that we can talk about. And the classic one is the Harp process, making ammonia from nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. Okay, so if you did triple GCSE, you might have come across this before. And you might have also come across Le Chatelier's principle, and that states that if you change any of the conditions which affect the position of a dynamic equilibrium, then the position of equilibrium will shift to minimise that change. So I'll give you an example. If I put more nitrogen into the reaction mixture, then the pressure of nitrogen increases. The concentration of nitrogen in that reaction mixture increases. And the Chatelier's principle says that the position of equilibrium is going to shift to minimise that change. So I've added nitrogen, so the position is going to shift to try and decrease the amount of nitrogen that's in the reaction mixture. So in order to decrease that concentration of nitrogen, the equilibrium has to go more towards the product. Because in the forward reaction, nitrogen gets used up, and so that decreases the amount of nitrogen in it. Equally, if I add hydrogen, that's going to push the reaction further towards the products, and so you're going to get more ammonia in the reaction mixture. And if I add more ammonia, then it's going to push it towards the left, and thus making more of the reactants and less of the products. And so when you're talking about positions of equilibrium shifting, if it's making more products, then we call that shifting to the left. And if it's making more reactants, we call that shifting to the right. And so adding reactants shifts it to the right. Adding products shifts it to the left. And also, if I remove reactants, that shifts it to the left. And if I remove products, that shifts it to the right. But concentration is not the only thing which affects the rate of a reaction. There's also temperature. The Chatelier's principle can help us there as well. If I increase the temperature of this reaction mixture, then the position of equilibrium is going to shift to try and minimise that increase in temperature. So I've written here that the entropy change of the forward reaction is exothermic. And so if I increase the temperature, then it's going to shift to the endothermic reaction. So the endothermic reaction takes in heat, and if I add heat, then taking in heat is minimising that change. So in this reaction, increasing the temperature shifts the equilibrium position to the left, because that decreases the temperature, because it's an endothermic reaction. And so hopefully it's obvious that if I decrease the temperature, that's going to shift it right. And the reason is because the right reaction is exothermic, so that would increase the temperature. If I increase the pressure of the whole reaction mixture by compressing the reaction vessel, for instance, then the reaction is going to try to decrease the pressure. And the way to decrease the pressure of a gas is by removing gaseous molecules. So if you look at this reaction, there is one, two, three, four gaseous molecules on the left, and only two gaseous molecules on the right. So if I increase the pressure of this reaction, it actually makes more ammonia. And the reason is because there's fewer molecules of ammonia on the right-hand side than there are molecules of gas on the left-hand side. So increasing the pressure tends to push it towards the side with fewer gaseous molecules. So hopefully it makes sense that if I decrease the pressure, it'll go to the side with more gaseous molecules. And that's exactly what happens. 
And there's one other thing that you can do, and that's add a catalyst to the reaction. Now, the way we say it is that catalysts speed up the forward reaction and the reverse reaction by the same amount. And so adding a catalyst has no effect on the position of equilibrium. And the Chatelier's principle kind of helps us out there as well. If we add a catalyst into the reaction, the Chatelier's principle says we should go whichever way would decrease the amount of catalyst. And no way decrease the amount of catalyst because catalysts don't get used up in reactions. And so if nothing can change, you can't change the fact that you've got a catalyst in there by just moving the reaction left or right. So catalysts have no effect on the position of equilibrium. Now I'm going to say this, and hopefully you'll pay attention. Don't get any of this confused with the rate of the reaction. Increasing the pressure, the temperature, the surface area, the concentration, adding a catalyst, those things all still increase the rate of a reaction. It's just that they increase the forward and the reverse reactions by different amounts. And so that's why you get a change in the position of equilibrium. If you're asking a question about equilibrium, then you talk about these. If you're asking a question about rates, then the previous video tells you all you need to know about rates. Boltzmann distribution, that's all rates. Increasing the frequency of successful collisions, those are rates. This is equilibrium. And the two things are often confused because of the fact they're talking about temperature and pressure. They're all talking about the same factors. But this is talking about equilibrium position. So please don't get the two things confused. And there's one type of question that makes people even more confused about when you talk about these and when you talk about reaction rates. And that's when you have to talk about both. There's one type of question where they ask for the reason why, for instance, you would use an increased temperature despite the fact that it gives you more of your reactants and less of your products. So in the harbour process, you might think that decreasing the temperature is for the best. That pushes the equilibrium position to the right and you get more ammonia. And that is true. But when you decrease the temperature, it also decrease the rate at which you make ammonia. And so this reaction goes really, really slowly towards the right hand side. Whereas if you increase the temperature, then it goes really quickly to the middle. And so they use what's called a compromise temperature. It's not that hot that it pushed the equilibrium position all the way to the left and you get no product, but it's not so cold that you never reach equilibrium. If you cool a reaction down to zero degrees, then sure, once you get to equilibrium, you'll have 98% yield, and that's great. But if it takes two years to get there, then you're not going to make any money from your ammonia. Whereas if you're only going to 50% yield, but it takes you a day, that's great. You can sell more ammonia that way than you can if you go to 100% yield, but it takes you two years. Other compromises that are made are pressure. So increasing the pressure of this reaction goes to the right-hand side, and that's great because that makes more products. But they don't increase the pressure really, 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 really high because a high pressure is dangerous. And it's also expensive because you've got to buy all the high pressure equipment and you don't want to pay for all of that. So they use a high pressure, but not a ridiculously high pressure. Now, normally these questions come up for about ammonia, but they can come up with anything else. In another reaction where increasing the pressure would actually make it go in the opposite direction to the way this one does, then you'd still use quite high pressure because that increases the rate of the reaction. So a similar reason for why you don't use a really low temperature in the harbour process. Now there's one thing that comes up in this specification for no apparent reason and that's Kc. Kc is called the equilibrium constant and you need to know how to write an expression for it but you don't really need to know much else about it except that if the number's bigger than one you've got more products than reactants and if the number's less than one you have more reactants than products. So I'll teach you how to write an equilibrium constant expression for ammonia. It's true for other ones as well but it doesn't tend to come up this year so we'll use it much more next year. Okay, so this will be the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction above. If you haven't seen square brackets before, they mean the concentration, so the concentration of ammonia squared, divided by the concentration of nitrogen times by the concentration of hydrogen cubed. Now the way you know these numbers from and where to put what, the products of the reaction go on the top of the equilibrium expression and the reactants go on the bottom. And since there are two ammonias, you do the concentration of ammonia times by the concentration of ammonia. So I just write that as the concentration of ammonia raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. And the same on the left hand side, on the bottom of this equilibrium expression, the nitrogen, there's only one, so it's the concentration of nitrogen. And then there's three hydrogens, so that's times by the concentration of hydrogen raised to the power of three. And if you put in these concentrations and then hit equals, 
if that number is 1, that means there's the same amount of each. If that number is more than 1, that means that the numerator is bigger than the denominator, and so therefore more ammonia, uh, more products and reactants, the equilibrium is on the right hand side. And if that number comes out to be less than 1, that means that the denominator is bigger than the numerator, and that means that you've got more nitrogen and hydrogen, which is an equilibrium shifted to the left hand side. And so you may be given concentrations, concentrations of ammonia, nitrogen, and hydrogen, and asked to write them into this expression. If you are, the number comes out to be greater than 1, less than 1, or 1, you know what to do. So that's very rare. Most of the time the questions come up about Le Chatelier's principle and what all of these different things do to the position of an equilibrium. And that's everything for this topic of AS equilibrium. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.